Okay, so the topic of this uh, lecture is estimating large crowds. So this is an actual thing, and you might ask yourself, well, why do I care? But some people care deeply. Mostly official planning type people. So an example of, of why people would need to care would be a parade. So at a parade, and it could be any parade, it could be a rodeo parade, it could be a World Series parade, it could be any parade. You have a bunch of people and they're lining the streets and you don't know how many people are there. And as a city planner, you kind of need to know this because you need to know lots of things. You need to know um, how many emergency vehicles you need, like if there's a fire or like with the Boston Marathon when they had the bomb, they need to know, you know, you, you hope that, that bad things don't happen, but if bad things happen, you need the emergency responders to be able to get in. So you need to know how many people are there. And emergency people aren't the only ones. Like, you need to know how many fire people to have on hand, how many police or whatever. But you also need to know how many people are there for traffic purposes. So you need to know if you need to shut down streets. You need to know if you need to reroute other, you know, to other areas. And you need to know how far to do that. Because if only five people are going to be there, maybe you could shut down a block. If 50,000, you're going to need more than a block. You also, depending on the event, you might have to plan for parking rides. So, like, rodeo parades and stuff like that, a lot of times they'll have buses where you can park your car remotely and just ride in with a bus so you don't have to find parking at the event. So you need to know how many people are there. And with stuff like parades, it's harder than if it's something that's in an enclosed space. So one way they're different is if you have an enclosed space, like say you have something at the Toyota Center or Minute Maid Park or something like that, there are just a, there are limited ways in and out. There's only a certain number of doors, and everybody that goes in has to go through those doors. Also, everybody that goes in gets counted. So even if they're just scanning your ticket, you're still being counted. You give them your ticket, they scan it, you go in, the computer knows that somebody went in, so that adds it to the count. Also, most of the time in places like that, once you go in, you don't leave. If you leave, you just you stay gone. So you can't come and go. So because of that, um, once you're there, you're there. You get counted. Your little tally is in the computer. And then if you leave, they just they take one number away from the computer, right? So they still they have a fairly accurate. I mean, you know, you have people that go in that are workers and that kind of stuff. So there's already, you know, there's always a, a certain number. But it, the number is small, and they still have a good idea of how many people are going in and out. If something's open, like a parade, that's completely different. So with a parade, for instance, you can go from any block, right? It's not closed off. They can't just take a ticket. I mean, if you do something like Dickens on the Strand in Galveston, then that's closed off. They close down the street and they take your ticket. It's more like an enclosed thing. But a parade, there are all kind of ways in and out. Also, like with a parade... You're not counted because there are so many ways in and out. You can't have somebody standing there with a little clicker counting you as you go in. Um, so there's not an accurate count. Plus, you can leave and you can come back. It's not closed off. So even if they count you, you could go in one, one block and then be walking down trying to find a good spot. And then your friend calls and you're like, hey, where are you? And then you go, you leave the area like two blocks down and then come back in. Like, they can't count you. So... Because of that, we need to be able to estimate, because we can't actually count, but we do need an idea of how many people are there. So there are a couple ways of doing this. Say, this is my parade route. Okay, so parade routes can be pretty long. So what happens usually is you have the street, and then you have people on both sides of the street, and they're standing there watching the parade. It could be five feet deep on both sides. It could be 10 feet deep on both sides. For, for this example, we're just going to assume 10 feet on either side and the parade route a half a mile long. Okay. So the first thing we would want to do is we would want to find this area, this part shaded in green. We want to find the area for where all the people are. So I'm going to copy this over. So I can think of this in two ways. So I can think of this as um, one big rect. I could think of it as two rectangles and add up the areas. So I could, yeah, so I could think of separate, several different ways. I could say, okay, well, this is one and one, and that would be my total area. 
I could think of it as um, both of those making one wide rectangle like this, where it would be half a mile long and 20 feet, right, because it's 10 and 10. So I could think of it in that way. Or I could think of it as one long skinny rectangle. So this gets back to perspective in this case. So I could think of it as a skinny rectangle like this. In this case, it would be 10 feet wide, and it would be a half a mile here, half a mile here, so that would be one mile. Okay. So anyway, look at that. The first thing we want to do is we have two different units here. We have feet and we have miles. So if we're going to have the area, we're going to need all the units to be the same. So first, we're going to have to, to convert. So I'm going to look at it. I'm going to use this one right here. doesn't really matter. You can use either either of these three. They'll all give you the same answer. But I'm going to try that. So I have my rectangle. And it's 20 feet wide. Obviously not to scale. And this is half a mile right here. Well, that... Um, I, I can't do an area out of that, right? I need the same unit. And I know we just came from the hurricane unit and we were doing nautical miles. We're doing land miles now. So a mile... Is 5,280 feet. So to get the to get the area, then I would say this is 20 feet times half a mile. So half of 5,280 feet. So my area then would be. This would be 5,280, so really 52,800 feet squared. Okay, so that gives me my area. So that's a start. But what I really want to know is I want to know how many people. Like, that's what I'm actually looking for. So normally, so we need a conversion factor. Normally, when we're not doing the whole coronavirus thing, we have an activity that we do in, in class, and we, we measure out five feet by five feet on the floor, and then we see how many people will fit inside that box. Obviously, this year, uh, that won't work because that's definitely not social distancing. So we end up having something that looks like this. And usually, every classroom will be kind of different. Some people, some classes will squish in together because they know each other, and some people kind of don't want to. But usually, like, you'll get, like, 17 people per, per 25 feet squared, right? Because 5 feet times 5 feet is 25 per 25 foot squared. Or um, I think the highest I've ever gotten was, like, 22. 22 people for 25 feet squared. So for, for your activity and also for your worksheet, this is very important, use 18 18 people for 25 feet squared. In reality, it's probably going to be less than this because if you're at like a parade or a concert and you don't know everybody there, even without social distancing, you're not going to want to be like all squished up against people you don't know. But definitely with social distancing, this would not be the case. So, okay. Then I know two things now. And, you know, when we're solving word problems, that's one of the first things we do is we, well, first we read the problem. Then we ask ourselves, okay, well, what do I know? And then we ask ourselves, what do I need to know? And how do I get there? Let me write those out. Okay, so you read the problem or you look at the situation. You ask yourself, okay, well, what do I know? What information is given? Then you say, okay, well, what do I want to know? Like what's being asked of me? And then step four is to look at it and go, okay, well, how do I get from what I know to what I want to know? What can I apply? Do I know formulas? This is Those four steps are what you're doing pretty much every time you solve a problem in AQR. So our question then is how many people at the parade? So that's what we, that's what we want to know. What we do know is we know the length and the width of the size of the crowd. So we know that it was 10 feet wide on both sides by half a mile long. So 10 feet, 10 feet, half a mile. And what we also know is we know that there are 18 people for every 25 feet squared. Like that's how densely we're packing them, 25 
25 feet squared. So those are the two things we know. So now we're going to use those and we're going to get what we want to know. So the first thing we did was we found our area. So step one, or I guess this makes, we're doing part four, I guess. So the first thing we did is we found our area. So our area we calculated was 52800 zero zero feet squared. As you can tell, I'm recording this at school. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this 18 people for 25 feet squared, that thing, we're going to take that and we're going to apply it. So basically, it's going to look like a conversion. So, and it kind of is, right? We start with area. We want people. So we have 52800 zero zero feet squared. We want people. So people is what we're going to put up top. And down below is going to be our feet squared. So now we just put our numbers in, right? There are 18 people, 25 feet squared. So now we take and we multiply across. So we go 52800 zero zero times 18, and then we divide that by 25. Okay, so I put that in the calculator, and that gives me 38,016 people, which seems like a lot, but if it's half a mile long and it's 10 feet wide on both sides, that's fairly realistic. So that's my final answer. So I'm going to put a box around it. So that's basically what we're doing with estimating large crowds. We have to find the area of where the crowd is, and then we need our density, like how many people per feet squared. And then we use that and we create it, we treat it like a conversion. The other way, so we have 18 people for 25 feet squared here. Sometimes you'll see it given as, you know, per person. So they'll say, okay, well, because of COVID, you have to be six feet apart, so if you have a person here and a person here, and they have to be six feet, right? But if you divide that in half, that's like three feet on either side of this person, and then that way too. So you could say, okay, well, this person then is three plus three, so six. So you end up with one person in this little bubble, right? So it would be six feet by six feet. So you would say, okay, one person or one people for six times six would be 36 feet squared. So that would be our conversion then. So if we did our same problem, like our same parade route, but we used it with social distancing, then we would say, okay, well, we already know the area of the parade route, and then we're going to multiply that using this instead. So it would be one person for every 36 feet squared. So then we would take our number, so 52800 zero zero feet squared, and we would divide that by 36, right? I'm gonna just draw a person instead of writing it out. There we go. So then I would take 52,800 divided by 36. So that would be like 1,467 people. I'm going to round down. So it'll be 1,466 people. That's a lot smaller crowd for the parade route. Okay, that's it on this video.